All right, in this video, we want to learn about sending mails and I added some CSS classes to our postcard so it looks nicer. So to start sending mails, first we need to set up our mailer service. And for this video, I'm using MailTrap, which you can have a free account and it's quite easy to set up. So you can go to MailTrap.io and create your account. Then it will take you to your inbox. So it should be under email testing, then inboxes, and you should see a view like this. So I'm gonna zoom in here and we want to integrate MailTrap with our Laravel application. So we need to choose Laravel 9 Plus under this section and just copy this information. Then let's go back to our project and paste it in a new file. And of course you need to keep your username, password safe and secure, but this is just for this video and it will be gone after that. Now we want to go to our ENV file and under mailer configuration section, we want to change these values. The first one, which says log, we want to change it to SMTP, which comes from here. Then the host is going to be our mail trap host instead of localhost, and then the username password. So I'm just going to copy this and we should be good to go. And this mail from address is the default email address that all the emails go out. But of course, we could overwrite this as well as the name. But that's all we have to do in terms of configuration, these few lines. So let's get rid of these. And the first step to sending a mail is to create a mailable class. And we can do that using an artisan command. So we want to run PHP artisan make mail and then give it a name. So I'm just going to call it welcome mail. This will create a folder under app with the name that we just provided. So under our app folder, we have a mail folder and within that we have our mailable class. So let's see what we have here. We have the boilerplate, of course, and our class that is extending the mailable class, and you can control click on any of these classes and see what they are. But the part we want to learn is these four methods. The constructor, which is used to pass down data to other parts of our class. Then we have the envelope, content, and attachments. And I like the naming of these functions because if you think of a physical mail or letter that you send to someone, you have the envelope, which is the outer part, and you write the sender and the receiver address and you put the stamp on it and so on. Then you have the content, which is within your envelope, and you write the actual letter in that and then the attachment for instance you are sending a postcard or something so you would include it as an attachment so in this envelope function if we control click or command click on the envelope class it will tell us what properties we can use for example the from property the to property the cc and bcc replying and tags and meta tags and so many things but we want to keep it simple for example for the subject I just want to say welcome to Laravel 11. We could say this is from the greeting department and they have this email or we could say this is replying to someone else. Now Laravel documentation recommends that if you are using these properties here instead of hard coding the address like this we need to use a new address class that needs to be imported from the mailable class. So this one. And within this address class, we can pass the email, for example, this one, and then the name, let's say John. So all of these are available in Laravel documentation. If we go to mail section and writing the mailable, you can see here it says from a new address, for example, or replying to, and the properties we can add. But let's just keep the subject for now, and I'm going to get rid of these and move on to the content. So again, if we control click on the content class, you can see the properties we have. If we were using a blade view, we should use the view property. If we were using plain HTML, then it's HTML, plain text or markdown and so on. Since we are going to use a blade view, we want to use the view property and create a blade view for our email. Let's go to our resources, then views and create a new folder. I'm going to call it emails. Within that, I'm going to create welcome.blade.php. And let's just have a text that says hello user. And for now, let's just leave it at that. So now inside this content method or function, we want to pass down the view that we just created. So within the emails folder, the welcome view. Now let's try to send an email and see how it works. Let's go to our post controller and we can use this index method just for testing. So in order to send an email, we can use the mail facade, make sure it is imported. Then we can say we want to send it to 
So this is the user we want to send it to. We could either pass a proper user object or we could just hard code it. Let's say mike at email.com and then we want to chain the send method and we want to send a new welcome email. So we just use our mailable class and then use the parentheses to invoke it. And if we had arguments, we would pass it inside these parentheses and we will do it later. So that's it. Now, if I go to the homepage on our website, we should get an email in our mail trap service. Let's go there. It is being reloaded automatically and you can see it's taking some time because it is sending the email. Now in our mail trap service, we have a new email that says welcome to Laravel 11 and the text that we used in our markup. You notice our blade view doesn't have any styles. So when it comes to styling your emails, the best way is to use inline style attributes because the email providers have different ways to handle the styles. So for example, we can use email templates for that. But you notice up here, it says from my app, that is the name of our application in our env file because we didn't specify what name or where do we want to send the email from. And our default email address, which is up here. So it's from my app and then the email address and then it is sent to Mike. Again, if you wanted to change these, you could just add a new address in your mailable class right here inside the envelope function. You can use the from attribute and say new address. So it has to be a new address and then say, for example, the greeting department. Let's see if this works. I'm going to reload the homepage again. So when that is done, in our mail trap service, we should get a new email. There we go. And you can see up here in the from section that says from greeting department and the email we used here. So you have a lot of customization you can do. But then again, I'm gonna get rid of this. Now, of course, sending a plain email is not always what we want. We want to make our emails more personal. For instance, instead of saying hello user, which is very generic, I want to say hello username. So whoever is the user. That means in this new welcome email that we are using for the mail facade, we need to pass down the user that is getting this email. So in our mailable class, we can have properties in our constructor. I'm going to create a public user. So we need to import our user model and then create an instance of it, of course. So since we are setting this property to public, it is automatically available in our view. Laravel again makes it easy for us to grab our properties in our view. Meaning if I go to our welcome blade view, that is our email, I can just use user variable like this and then chain the username because we know our users have a username. And that's all we have to do to pass down data to our views. Now, as soon as we do that, in our post controller where we call the email, we have an error because now it is expecting a user. Now, the easiest way to just pass down a user here is to use the auth facade and then the user function. And we need to make sure we are logged in. So let's go to the homepage again, and it's gonna take some time. When that is done in our mail trap service, we have a new email that says, hello, John. So the name of the user that is currently logged in. Now let's say we want to also send attachments. So in this attachment function, we want to return an attachment class. So first we need to import it. We have two attachment classes. The one that we want is from mailable. So if we scroll up, this is the one we are going to use from mail, mailable, then attachment. And on this class, we want to attach a file from somewhere. Now, if you were just attaching a file that has a static path, you could just use from path and then use the file path that you want to attach. If you were using a local storage, then you could use from storage and it is automatically looking to our default storage, which is local. But in our case, we can use the storage disk and then specify the disk we want to use since we are saving the post images in the public disk. So I'm just going to choose this one, then pass public as the first argument, which is the name of our disk, and then the path to the file. So for example, if we go to our public folder here and then storage and then post images, and let's grab one of these. So I'm going to copy this name and it's PNG. So let me just paste that here before I lose it. And this method is automatically looking inside a storage public. So all we have to do here, add our posts underscore images folder. So again, we are going inside the storage right here, then post images, then a specific image, right? So that is our attachment. Let's see if this works. So we should get an email with the name of the currently authenticated user. Let's just reload home page again. And when that is done, let's see the new email. We get welcome to Laravel 11 and also 
the username and you notice right here we have an attachment with that name so it ends in tvi and if we look at our files this is the one we used that ends in tvi so if we click on this one it would download it on our machine at least for my computer so we know it works and we can attach images or files to our emails then again, we don't want to hard code these things. We want to make it dynamic. Now, for example, I want to send an email to the user when they create a post and say, you created this post and this is the information of that post. So we can accept a post instance alongside with the user. So let's create a public post parameter in our constructor function in the mailable class. So make sure the post model is imported then down here in our attachment instead of hard coding this path which exists in our database in the posts table we can use the this keyword referring to this class and then our post parameter and we know we have an image property on this one so this would be the same as hard coding it but for different posts and of course we need to pass down a post instance to our mailable class now that is attaching the image. Let's say I want to get the post title and the body inside the email view as well. So we already know how to do this since this is a public property. If we go to our welcome view, create a div and say, you created this post and this is the body. Now we could also attach the photo in line. Right now we are attaching the photo as an attachment, right? But if you want to make it in line, there is also a way for that. We could use an image tag, of course. And for the source of the image, we want to use the curly brackets. But right here, we cannot use the asset function. Instead, we have a special property that is called a message. So when we create a mailable class, we have a message property available to us by default. So that is just a global message property available on the mailable class. And on that message, we can use the embed function that would take the path to the file we want to embed in our email. So let's just pass down post image and see if this works. I believe we need to pass down the storage here, but for now, let's just leave it as it is. I honestly don't remember exactly, but let's test this out. So we want to go back to our post controller and cut this statement from the index because we want to send the email when the post is created. So let's go down to the store method right after creating a post. We want to make a comment and say send email, then paste that statement. We want to send the mail not to this hard coded text, but to the authenticated user. So whoever that created this post, then we want to send a new welcome mail, which is now expecting a user and the post we already passing down the user we just have to pass down the post and in order to get this post we can just save the return result of this create statement so this would give us a proper post object with all the information we would need so let's go to our application or website and let's create a post i want to say email post just to make sure it is very specific and some text here and choose a file and i'm going to choose this heart one since I don't have it here, and press create. This should take some time because it's trying to attach the files and send an email and do some processing. And we get an error. It's because of this part that I said I don't honestly remember. We need to add the storage text here before our post image. So I'm going to cut this and just say storage and then a forward slash and then concatenate the post image path. So let's do this again. So we just reload the page. And you can see the post was created two times and my styles are broken, that's fine. But we have two posts because the post was actually created, but the email part was wrong. Anyway, let's go to the mail trap and we have our email that says, hello, John, you created email post with this text. And you notice that the image, which is quite large, is embedded here. We should add a width property to this image. And also we have that image as an attachment. So everything works the way we want. It's just the styles are broken. I'm going to do this again. I'm going to delete these two last posts that were created. Then I'm going to add a width property to this image. So maybe 300. Then I'm going to create another post here. So new post from John and maybe some content and then choose a file. Maybe this cherry one. 
and press create. We could actually add some JavaScript code to make this button disabled and I will do it in the next video. Okay, so the post was created. It's right down here. And if we go back to mail trap, we have our email that is sent to this user from our app with one attachment and of course the content. So everything works the way we want and that is how we can send emails through a mailable class. So just a quick recap, we use the constructor to accept parameters and the public parameters will be available automatically to our view. We use the envelope function to declare the sender, the receiver, subject, and other properties of an email. We use the content method to create the actual content within the email, for example, a blade view or HTML or text. And we use the attachment method to attach different files from different locations. We also have a special property called message that is always available within our mailable views. And lastly, to send an email, we used the mail facade to specify the receiver and the email class we want to use. So that's it for this video, guys. In the next one, we want to verify our users through email.